Daffodils appear in so many vibrant and variable colors this time of year, yellows, whites, oranges, and more. They can vary not only in color, but in size as well. There are smaller ones like the tet a tet is that how you say it? <laughs> and much larger ones like the Dutch Master. I know how to say that. Yep. Don't take my word for it, for obvious reasons. Take it from our resident gardening expert and good friend, Jenny Rosencrantz with the University of Maryland Extension. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Look at my beautiful friends that did came say, with me. Did I say that right? Tete-a-tete. Tete-a-tete. tete tete is like when you're sitting down and having a conversation. Oh. So these little daffodils are just perfect to put on a table so that you're having a little conversation. And there's a lot of different varieties yeah. there to have a conversation oh. about. What do we have here? Oh my gosh. Well, I just brought a gazillion daffodils. You did. <laughs> because I want to see show people that there are so many different sizes and shapes and colors. So like for instance, this one right here, completely white. Mm. The, the trumpet is white and the perianth is white, which is just so, so cool. And then, but you know, in the white thing, here's one that is got, whoa, let me pull it out. Look at that orange. Is that not amazing? Yeah. It's just so vibrant. And, uh, and then this one is really cool too. It's white. But it's got this really pretty trumpet. It's, the trumpet's very frilly. This looks very, very feminine. Yeah, so very yeah. pretty. So, but then you have like the Dutch Master is a big and a hunky one. This is a monster. And it, it shines. It says, look, I'm a daffodil. <laughs> I love it. And I kind of think about, you know, the fact that uh, these are poisonous. And so never. I'm sorry, what? Daffodils are poisonous. So yesterday you had somebody talking about how they have the sap here that you can't okay. have with other plants. Well, nothing's going to eat these. So if you put them in a, a pasture, horses don't eat them, cows, even sheep don't eat them. Wow. Okay. Voles don't eat them. Yeah. And voles eat everything. <laughs> they eat everything. everything. Yeah. But I kind of was thinking, oh, these obviously are a bright, bright yellow. Mm -hmm. Why were they bright yellow? And then I had this idea. It must have been a woolly mammoth that was walking around trying to eat things. And the daffodil said, don't eat me. Look how bright I am. I must be poisonous. There you go. <laughs> so when you, we talk about the many varieties, are we talking hundreds of varieties? Oh, yeah, thousands? I think so. I yeah. mean, like if you open a catalog, there is so many. And, and some of these are really, 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 really old mm -hmm. without names. And there are a lot that are, people are breeding, plant people love to go, oh look, I like this one and this one, put them together. Uh -huh. Like for instance, this looks very, very similar to the Dutch Master in size Different and all that. Color. This one is called Las Vegas. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the color, the trumpet, the whole nine yards. But somebody said, we need to brighten it up with a little bit of ye yellow and white. So it's kind of funny. When you put these together, I'll pull out that poor Dutch Master again. This is an old fashioned one that has absolutely no name. Look at the difference in size. Isn't that yeah. cool? Is yeah. that, so we've come a long way with them in terms of breeding for color and size and all that kind of stuff. And the pop of the orange instead of the white. And it's just so much so fun. So can you plan for the for the pop of color of the orange or the other part? Or do you just put them together and see what happens? Well, if you are a designer and, and you put your mind to it, you can go ahead and plan for it. And when you plant these things, they don't die. They live forever, okay. which is why I found these guys on the side of the road because I did find out who owned it and picked them. <laughs> but, you know, actually what I did is I bought the bulbs and brought them back to my house, so I have them now. But, I mean, like, I have some that have been there for uh, oh, since, since we moved to the shore in 74. Wow. And, you know, I still have some of the yards that were there before me. So these things last forever because nothing eats them. If they're wonderful. And, the, and they also are obviously are hardy because we see them popping up in February. Yes, yes. And they, they well, survive. They were originally on mountains. Mm. And uh, so that's why uh, they like to be in full sun, but you can plant them in the sh under the shade of trees that lose their leaves in the fall. That's really important. And the other thing is, is they, they need to have it well drained. So if you're on a mountain, everything drains really, really well. So think about that. So if it's a wet spot in your yard, don't plant it there because mm -hmm. they will rot. But I mean, y you can go ahead and design, you know, all the yellows together with a, like a, a fringe of the white on the outside and do swirls inside. Oh, it, you can have a blast with it. Artistic and did you, you have to thin them out at some point? You know, actually, they like everything else is as they get uh, really growing, they get a little bit crowded because they have babies and more babies and more babies until they don't have any elbow room at all. And that's when you need to say, hmm. And the best time to dig them up is after they bloom and the foliage is still slightly green but starting to be yellow because you can find them. Ah. You can find them. You know, everyone says time to dig them up is in the fall. Fall is great. 
but where are they? Where are yeah, they? <laughs> that's a good point. So, so that's the best thing. And there, and then you can go ahead and dig them up, and you'll probably find a bunch that are like in, in groups of three or four, and then you just break them apart and put them back in. Just make sure you plant them deep enough. They like to be at least six inches down into the ground. And if you don't know what that is, get a tape measure. Okay, <laughs> that works. All right, yes. one quick question. Sure. What's your favorite daffodil? All of them. Oh, uh, <laughs> asking you to choose your children. They're there. so <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, they're gorgeous and they're so fragrant. Yes, yes. it smells so yeah. good. And the later ones, these are just the early spring guys. I have some in mid spring and late spring. That's wonderful. Yes. Jenny Rosencrantz with the University of Maryland Extension. Thank you so much for brightening our studio <laughs> and for bringing the flowers. As Thank well. you. For, <laughs> Thank you for sharing.